partials are not the problem. Black and white thinking is. I don't understand these rigid beliefs. Just do full range of motion. Just do partials. Just do deficits. How about do it all? I mean, like everything else, these are just tools in your training. They can be abused and they can be used correctly. For example, with partials, if you're trying to raise your strength, we have progressive range of motion. It's a time-tested strategy and it's never going away. It is one of the greatest methods in the history of mankind for getting stronger. It's a fact that it works very, very, very well. Whether you're enhanced or not, it's time-tested and it's never going away in a million years. So if someone says, oh, just do full range, well, they're missing on the benefits of progressive range of motion, which all the old school grades did, or a large percentage of them did. When you do progressive range of motion, you're strengthening the tendons and ligaments and building your performance in all the various joint angles. Now, if you're just doing partials exclusively without full range, then you're being a fucking idiot. Unless, of course, you're doing it for a very specific reason. For example, vertical jump. We have studies that prove if you do partial pin squats, high box squats, basically what people have been doing for close to 100 years, your vertical jump will raise better than if you did full range acid grass squats and your sprinting performance will also increase more. You know why? Because strength is joint angle specific. So when we talk about specificity of the joint angles, partials can be oftentimes superior. And the greatest example I can give you is the sport of arm wrestling. Every single arm wrestler does half reps. They all do it. They either do quarter reps or half, 90 degrees. If I hold here and start doing this, these are static holds. Yeah. This is good, but if you want to do dynamic work, this is what you do. They don't go all the way at the bottom because it's not specific for their sport. In the sport of arm wrestling, when you are battling one person, your arm does not go past 90 degrees. So what are you going to do? You're going to train using partials. It's sport specific. So you see why it's not so black and white? If you use progressive range of motion, it's fantastic. If you use it to raise your vertical jump, it's fantastic. If you do it to strengthen tendons and ligaments, it's fantastic. What about overhead holds? A lot of weightlifters do that, where you squat under the bar, pick it up, build shoulder mobility, build your structural integrity. What about front squat holds? Build your midsection. What about zercher holds? Strengthen the tendons and ligaments in the forearm and bicep area, which prevents injuries. Strengthens the core, keeps your upper back tight. It's not so black and white. Partials can be used correctly. Now, they can also be abused. You have guys that just do partials and that's fucking stupid, unless you're doing it for a specific reason. So if you're using it correctly, there's absolutely nothing wrong with partials. And again, it's time tested and it's never going away. Now, as far as the legitimacy of some of these lifts, okay, the whole full range of motion argument is arbitrary. Competition plates, to my knowledge, are 17.8 inches in diameter. The reason they are that size is because of Olympic weightlifting. It's to prevent you from getting decapitated. They needed standardized plates for competition. And of course, over time, it developed to be that. And now they use the same size in powerlifting and, and, and even strongman we talk about, like the full range deadlift. So it's an arbitrary number. Now that said, just because that's the standard doesn't make it the best. I can tell you for a fact that the vast majority of people will be far better off pulling from blocks, especially if your goal is hypertrophy. And that's something that people don't talk about. Yeah, we can discuss the strength all, like, all day. We can talk about it. We can talk about how deficits are superior for raising your bottom strength. And that's so true. Yes, it is. And if you want to get better at a range of motion, you got to practice it. But if your goal is hypertrophy, longevity, safety, and of course still getting a good amount of carryover, well, it's not so black and white that the partial has to be to the extreme. You understand what I'm saying? So if you're doing rack pulls above the knee to raise your deadlift, you're a fucking moron. You want to do below the knee rack pulls and below the knee rack pulls work. They do work. If you're pulling it from right below your kneecap or like mid shin or like slightly below that, it works. It's going to have carryover. So there's an extreme here. You understand? Um, this whole partials are bad. It's wrong because they're, they're assuming that every partial is the same when they're not the same. What about a high handle trap bar deadlift? Those handles are like three inches higher than normal. And if you got the rogue trap bar, even higher than that. You're going to tell me not to do high handle trap bars? Hell no, man. And actually the studies prove that the muscular activation is the same. You don't see significant difference in terms of muscular activation. You see slight deviations in the quads, lower back, and hamstrings. But beyond that point, the two exercises are actually very similar. Or very, very, very similar to a conventional deadlift full range. So like, you know what, from a hypertrophy standpoint, why don't you just do what suits your physiology and extends your longevity? If you can only do one set of five with a conventional deadlift off the floor, you're limiting your hypertrophy gains. 
but if you can raise it four inches above the ground, increase the weight by 30 pounds, and now you're able to do five by five at the same time, you're gonna get more jack from it and you're gonna be safer in the process despite the volume because the leverages are better. Do you see why it's not so black and white? And the same thing for deficits. Don't just do deficits. Do deficits, classic full range, and partials. Use them in a systematic way. Just be smart. Use your common sense. The answer is not ditch partials. The answer is use them fucking correctly. A good rule is 80% Full range, 20% partials. Or maybe it could be 60% full range, 20% deficit, 20% partial. And if you're going to use partials in a smart way, do them once a fucking week. How about that? Once a week just for a little bit of overload. So if you're going to deadlift four times a week, do a fucking block pull one of those times and the other pulls the other times. Or flip it around. Do three times pulling off blocks, one time pulling off the floor. Okay? It's not black and white. And like I said, some lifts feel better, even the Jefferson pulls. In many cases, the four inch, like when you're pulling four inches above the ground using the Jefferson stance, it makes everything right. It makes it safer. It makes it more specific for many, many, many sports because you're never going to go ass the grass. It makes it better for vertical jump, all these different things, okay? And what about rack pulls above the knee? Guys, rack pulls above the knee is the greatest trap builder in the history of mankind. There's nothing on the planet that can surpass it, period. For a bang for your buck lift, it's top of the top of the top. People always talk about, oh, you have to lift up a thousand pounds. That's bullshit. I already proved that it's nonsense. If you do high repetition, so high volume, low rest, just like you do on any bodybuilding program, you can get all the benefits without the cons. So the truth is that you don't need more than 400 to 500 pounds. So this whole idea of bending all your bars and ego lifting goes out the fucking window, okay? And now you can strictly focus on the traps. I heard a comment the other day from a very biased individual saying that rack pulls above the knee build the same amount of mass as a deadlift. The only difference is that they're more dangerous. Well, you know what? Thank you for saying that because now if I use the same weight, right, I can just do volume work and I can get all the trap benefits without loading the rest of the posterior chain. Do you see how some of these words can fly back at them? But if you're trying to build your traps, nothing will ever beat the rack pull above the knee. You don't have to go stupid heavy on it. Do it on your volume day. Do a five by 20. Do three sets of 33. Do high repetitions. Hold at the bottom. Stretch. You don't need stupid heavy weights. I learned this a long time ago. Although I built my traps primarily with the heavy weight, I learned with experience that volume work is equally as effective. So you can totally do that. Totally. You don't need heavy weights for it, okay? Fuck. And another thing about the rack pull, it's actually called the hand and thigh lift, and it's been around longer than the fucking bench press. Since the 1700s. People used to do it off barrels, for fuck's sake. Barrels. Ain't in the 1800s they did it, 1900s, hand and thigh lift. You want to talk about strength standards, bastardizing lifts? The hand and thigh lift is an official lift, older than most of all these other stuff. And actually, throughout history, partials were the way by which we tested things. Why? Because it was the upper extremities of the human body, the upper extremities of your joint angles. It makes perfect sense. If you're going to make an arbitrary range of motion that's not actually full range for a lot of people, you're basing things off leverages. But if everybody is at the peak joint angles for the physiology, now you're testing the highest strength possible. That's why things like the back lift were considered the ultimate test of absolute strength. You understand? So it's not black and white. Do it all. Do full range, do deficit, do partials, and do it in a smart fucking way. I just don't understand the mentality of just doing one over the other. It, it just, it's not common sense. Look at the pros and cons. That's all. Look at the pros and cons. Look at what's specific and be intelligent with your programming. That's it. All right? And that's, that's pretty much all I want to say in this video. This isn't a diss towards anybody. Uh, much love and respect to you all. I just want to share my thoughts on partials because I'm just tired of the black and white thinking. People try to demonize them when they don't understand that there's very applicable uses for it. They can be used in a very, very smart way. It's just that some people abuse it, you know? And when you abuse it, it becomes an issue. So there you have it, folks. Give me your feedback down below, and I'll talk to you on the next segment.